Right guys, so I got up something special I wanna show you guys today. You might have already seen it, but this has been a long time coming for me since I've been on this YouTube journey back in 2017. It's these guys here, the Martin Logan Neal Lith speakers. I've actually owned the little baby versions, the ESL XLs, but this is gonna be a treat for me. I'm gonna get a chance to actually listen to these. But just to give us some more tech specs about them, let's refer to Andrew. He knows everything about them. <laughs> What do these go for? What do they sell for? What are they made out of? Why are they so big? Yeah. Uh, Give so us some details. This particular pair, uh, 120000 a pair. So the, uh, basically any color we can paint them in, there's there's really no upcharge until you go right. to the, like the really custom, like I want this specific shade of, of this random color. But So you could get like a Ferrari red, Bugatti black. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically if a paint code exists, yeah, sure, we can do that. Wow. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of our standard uh, uh, colors, the the deep sea blue, which I think is really really cool looking. But yeah. uh, we've done like like you said, the the Ferrari red. Uh, we've done one in uh, Minnesota Vikings purple. Mm -hmm. We've done, you know, any any color you can dream of. You yeah. can match it to your supercar if you like. So right. you know, we can definitely do that. Uh, but these are an incredibly special speaker for us. So we actually had a uh, a speaker uh, in the '90s called the Statement E2, which was the largest panel that we had ever made. Well, we wanted to make this. This is actually now the largest electrostatic panel that we've ever made. It's a 48 inch tall by 22 inch wide ESL panel. So the biggest electrostatic sweet spot that we could possibly make. Uh, and besides the size of the panel, uh, we've also got a forward firing 12 inch carbon fiber woofer and a rear firing 15 inch aluminum woofer. So this is truly a full range experience. Uh, but one of the really coolest pieces about this besides the, just the impressive looks and the amazing sound, the cabinet's actually made out of phenolic resin. Uh, so it's an incredibly inert and incredibly dense material. Uh, it's basically very similar to like what you'd find on a cue ball. So very, very heavy, very, very hard. Um, and we finished that in, in any color you can, you can conceive. These are in our beautiful deep sea blue that you see here. Um, the other really cool thing about this speaker is we designed it for the ultimate listening experience. So behind the glass panel here, you'll notice a series of controls that we've installed on here. And this is a completely passive speaker. So whatever amplification you like to use, uh, we accept. Uh, of course, it's bi-amplified uh, capable, but these jumpers here adjust for a few different things. So the top ones here adjust the output of the bass drivers. So you can see in this configuration here, we can tune uh, 8 dB, negative 4 dB down. So if there's too much bass for the room you have installed, you can tone the woofer down uh, or have it in the flat configuration. And then this is actually a listening distance adjustment. Because the output of the panel is so big, uh, it actually will bounce off of the floor. So usually an electrostatic speaker, that's not the case, but the size of this panel, we can actually compensate for the floor bounce. So here you'll notice on the distance adjustment, you can dial in how far back you're sitting. So in this case, we have a choice of three meters, four meters, or five meters away, and it will adjust the crossover for how far back you're sitting to optimize the output of the speaker. So lots of customization, um, any color you can dream of, and just some of the best dr drivers and electrostatic panel that you could ever find. So this looks, this whole back portion does look like your balanced force subwoofers. It does look like that. Um, that's pretty intentional. Uh, yeah. We like we thought it was a cool look, but this is actually not a uh, balanced woofer configuration. Each one is in their own uh, sealed asymmetrical uh, chamber. So the front firing woofer is most of what you're going to hear. And then the 15 on the back is just for that last few octaves for those lowest notes. So wow. they are, are they are actually doing uh, different things. And let's talk about the size of the, uh, the panel. Yeah. Like why is it so large? What's the benefit of having such a large panel? So the, the thing with electrostatic panels is the bigger you can make it, the more uh, output you can get. Uh, one of the things with, with these panels is controlled dispersion. So they shoot sound in a 30 degree arc. So if I have a seven inch wide panel with a 30 degree arc, I have a much smaller sweet spot than I do with, well now a 22 inch panel. So uh, being the wider you can get, the more you can cover. But then you also start getting more detail. You start getting a much larger sound stage. I mean, when, when you hear these later, yeah, the sound stage is just absolutely enormous. Uh, so this is almost 1,100 square inches of radiating area. So 
incredibly effortless sound, an incredible detail, but really it's about that, that sound stage and that resolution is what the, the bigger panel gives you. Do you know what the frequency response of it is? Uh, it's from, I want to say 22, 23 hertz all the way up to, you know, beyond the range of human hearing. Yeah, so you basically almost don't need a subwoofer. Yeah, it's you pretty much worse. don't. Uh, in, mo in most rooms, you wouldn't be able to hit below what this can already play on its right. own. Yep. Uh, although if you really wanted to go over the top, you could use some of our balance force yep. woofers. But uh, most owners don't do that. They just use what it comes with. Right, right, right. Uh, it's just a fantastic. Uh, you do need to bring your own power though for yeah. that. So yeah, these these are actually running off of uh, the Hegel monoblocks here. So and do these uh, come with wheels on the bottom of them? Or yeah. So you'll notice uh, you know it is a little strange to see speakers on wheels. That's because out of their crates they weigh almost 400 pounds. So it's uh, kind of hard to move without them. Uh, inside the crate they weigh almost 700 pounds. So these are actually on the casters just to make them easier to move. Uh, but they actually do come with spikes. To, to where you can really dig them in for maximum performance. We just uh, don't want to scratch up the floor today. So, so that's why they're still installed on the casters. Um, and I do know several owners that leave them on the wheels for, for that reason, because they like to yep. uh, play with stuff or, or change their configuration. And they're just really impossible to move without them installed. All right, so I got a chance, well, Thank you for having me over here to listen to these uh, great speakers. Uh, I just want to give you some of my personal thoughts on them. First of all, I mean, obviously they're they're fantastic looking, they're beautiful <laughs> looking, and I would say that these obviously they share kind of like the same uh, characteristics as the ASL XLs that I've had, and also the 13 As, just on a much grander scale, and they still have that that three dimensional holographic kind of illusion. I know a lot of people talk about this with like some high-end speakers and all that. Like they say that your speakers disappear. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like a, I don't know, a little metaphor, I guess, but they really don't disappear. But these actually sound like they actually do disappear because I think those uh, electrostatic panels, they're so light, so they can move so quick that it's just, it's. How does that exactly work? Like it vibrates air so quickly that it's just the uh, yeah, project ba sound. Yeah, basically right? the panel film material that moves yeah. the air, it weighs so little that it really doesn't color the sound in any way. Right. It's really, really hard to describe in, until you hear it. Yeah. Um, it's, there's just nothing else like it. Um, but we've always gravitated towards that thin film sound. Yeah. Like obviously starting with electrostatic and then to a lesser extent the folded motion tweeter. but. Um, we've also found that the larger you go with it, there's not a lot of drawbacks. There's actually really no drawback. Uh, yeah. Even though the speaker is huge, it still just vanishes entirely. Um, and I, you know, I'm obviously a little little biased on the way they sound, <laughs> yeah. but um, just the resolution you get, like the detail it can resolve, and then the scale of the speaker. Like it's it's a huge speaker itself, but the sound stage it can project is just incredible, and that's. That's one of the things about the speaker is, is I, like I don't believe that there's ever too much speaker for a room, but this is definitely a speaker where the more room you can give it, the more it can shine. For yeah. sure, for sure. So uh, you know, back to the that airy light detail, that crispy high sparkle that I've heard on other speakers. Like I don't want to name any, sure. you know, names. <laughs> yeah, um, me like Focal. You know those <laughs> brilliant tweeters. Um, they can kind of resolve that same amount of detail, but at the same time, if you're listening to, if you're moving on to a different portion of a song, to like a cymbal, then say to like an electric guitar, yeah. whereas that beryllium tweeter might resolve that airiness from a cymbal, once you hit that guitar, it gets overbearingly loud and really grates on your ears. Whereas with an electrostat panel, such as these guys, they remain a very consistent tone all across the, uh, the upper range, so it doesn't actually ever get harsh on your ears. Yeah. And you know when we're talking about that holographic transparency, we were listening to the song uh, "Bird" by Dominique Fismay, which is one of my uh, reference CDs that I like to listen to. Um, just the the depth of the sound stage is so deep. I mean, this room isn't a gigantic room, but it's it moves this. I don't know what the what is what's going on in that sound, but it's almost like like birds or something like that. Yeah, that's kind of flapping in yeah. the background. I don't think I've heard that in my in my. My personal speakers. I mean, I've kind of heard it, but it, not to the effect where it's like I could hear the singer up front, maybe the guitarist or whoever is there on the left side. But then that that sound is coming behind it. There's a different layers to that background yeah. sound. I don't know what it is, but it's so weird. It kind of like travels from the left over towards the center of the room, 
Right. It just, it's really hard to explain, but it's so light in area that it's just like, it almost sounds like it's in the room with it, you. It's just effortless, right? Yeah. Because if you think about a traditional dome tweeter, you know, a one inch dome tweeter, well, that's really like three quarters of a square inch. That's 1100, yeah. right? So there's just so much more material to resolve that detail. So yeah, it, it is completely effortless. There's no coloration to it. And it's just something you have to hear to experience. Uh, I mean, there's a reason that a lot of the really high end microphones are electrostatic in nature, yeah. right? The, so it's like, well, if you're going to record on it, then maybe you can play back with it. And you absolutely can. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's unreal. There's a, there's a cool look to it, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, the visual component's important because, you know, anybody that buys high end audio that, that, that says they don't care about the way it looks, come on, right? Like there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's a cool component to that. But yeah, th there's just an effortless detail, high resolution. And yeah, the, the soundstage depth is just unreal yeah, because, because it can resolve all of that detail that's always been there. It's yeah. just, hey, we, we can actually, yeah, you can actually, hear we, it we can actually play it yeah. in a way that you can hear without being overbearing. It's very, very neutral is the best way to yeah. describe it. And then, uh, you know, we're playing that song, uh, Think by Kaleida. You know, yeah, great, great song. Yep. 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 Fans yep. out there. Yep. And uh, yeah, these are basically just like having balance four subwoofers just attached to you know the electrostat panel. These things can rock. I mean, they dig incredibly low. I mean, I can see why you wouldn't need to have a subwoofer with these guys. Right. Um, but really, if you want to take it to the next level, I would say get a couple of two twelves. I mean, sure. More is always better, right? <laughs> but it, it's just it's it's a very coherent sound. Yeah. Because it's it's kind of counterintuitive. Okay, you have this really super lightweight thin pa panel, yeah. and then it has a fifteen. And it's like, well, when you have a really good one, it doesn't color the sound either. Yeah. So, and we're only asking those woofers to play a small portion of the sound. We wanted the panel to play mm -hmm. uh, as much as we possibly could. Yeah, and that it goes imaging, down, it like goes, like the vocals. I mean, it legit sounds like it's right here. It's, it's, it's wild. so crisp. Yeah, and you know, I like to hear when you know the singers' mouths are close to the mic, or they're they're you know their lab or whatever um it, where you can hear the, the the spit in their mouth yeah you start yeah. to hear things that maybe you didn't want to <laughs> yeah. but but it was always there like yeah. I, I i can't remember the name of the song but there's one where at the very beginning um she's in a recording booth and you can hear like some of the machinery going yeah and that's one of the few speakers on earth that you you go oh wow i yeah. had no idea that was there yeah. uh and it's just yeah, it's just a, I say magic a lot, but there is a magic to yeah, that, right? For sure. Like, you know, that's the reason why I. That's you know I was telling Andrew about this earlier. Like I wanted to have like a reference speaker, and I wanted it to be like an electrostatic panel. But there's, since they're so effortlessly detailed, I I just think it's kind of cheating if I'm <laughs> gonna compare it to like a, a dome tweeter or a soft dome tweeter or whatever it is. Um, I just feel like. I would need to have like another dome tweeter to compare it to other speakers because that's fair. they're very I, different. Yeah, I just very haven't different. heard any tweeter to sound as good as an electrostatic speaker does. Yeah. I mean, still one of my probably my most favorite speaker of all time was an electrostatic speaker. And then underneath that is well, you guys have heard me talk about my second favorite speaker, but yeah. <laughs> my number one would still be the, the Martin Logans. But uh, yeah, man, if you guys have any time at all, definitely come down to this place. Safe and Sound in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, one of the best showrooms I've ever been in. I mean, it's like an adult toy store. They yeah. have everything. And yeah, I think you can count on maybe a couple hands uh, how many places actually have these on demonstration. And, and it's certainly a cool experience. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, despite the room size here, I, I would definitely recommend you getting having a larger space for these speakers. because big of a space yeah, as you can. Because they do <laughs> need room to breathe. I mean, these sound fantastic in this room, but I feel like they could sound a lot better. So definitely get a big room for these guys. Definitely. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.